Welcome into College Corner today, getting into the college basketball slate for Tuesday. Got three of my favorite bets for you. Quick recap from Saturday. Not a good day, man. Alabama not closing things out with Tennessee. New Mexico, a bit of a no-show. Same with Charlotte. Just a bad read there. Wrote. So one and three on those plays. Uh, definitely expecting to bounce back here on Tuesday. We tend to do a lot better during the week than on the weekends. Need to fix that. But if you guys are looking for more plays, I'll have some player props, a whole bunch of stuff uh, each and every day. If you drop me a follow on Twitter, I'll include that link down below in the description. It's time to get hot. We're getting close. Conference tournaments are kicking off too. Hopefully we'll have some plays in these conference, small college, uh, small conference tournament games in the mid-majors. Uh, but right now looking at some power conferences here. Uh, if any of these lines do move a fair bit and you still want to know if you should play them, ask me down below in the comment section. Let's jump into Tuesday's slate. All right, first up, we're heading to the ACC. I like a play here between Florida State and Pitt. I like the over 147 and a half. We've got two teams that haven't played each other this year, surprisingly enough. Pitt uh, should be able to have a lot of offensive efficiency at home in this one. Expect to get a a lot of points from them. High volume three point shooting team led by Blake Hinson, taking about 45% of their shots from three, top 25 rate in the country. That is a perfect way to match up against this Florida State squad because Florida State has really struggled to defend the three this season. They rank 276th in three point defense. Their opponents are shooting over 35%, with Hinson leading the way. This three point shooting uh, from, from Pitt should be super efficient. So expect scoring to come easy for this team. And even if it doesn't, FSU has struggled to defensive rebound. They rank, what, 324th in defensive rebounding, while Pitt is a top 100 team in offensive rebounding. So second chance opportunities are going to be there. Put back opportunities are going to be there. Uh, and FSU also putting their opponents to the line quite a bit. So plenty of ways for Pitt to get to, you know, potential of or likely 80 plus points in this game. Now, can we get enough from Florida State to stay in this game? I think we can. You know, Pitt is a team that's really reliant on their guard play. And as a result, they do struggle a bit defending inside. Their opponents are shooting over 50% from two. And there's a Florida State team that does get vast, vast majority of their points inside. Over 56% of their shots are scored from two. So the, the split is between either two-point shots, three-point shots, or at the free throw line. They're a top 40 team in the country in terms of percentage of points from two. So can take advantage of the weakness here from this Panthers defense. And not to mention, you know, when we're looking at taking it over, pace is great here. We've got a Florida State team that's, what, 31st uh, in average offensive possession length, so very fast in their own right, and Pitt also above the nation's average. So I think 147.5 is a little bit low. I would probably see this more priced. If I saw this priced at like 150 uh, or 151.5, I probably wouldn't see as much of an edge, but at 147.5, I think there's a good edge here. So I'm going to be taking the over in this game. Now we go from an over to an under, going to Kansas State and Kansas. I like the under at 142.5. So these teams played a few weeks ago uh, and it did go over the number but that was because of overtime 16 points in overtime made this a 75 70 game uh, where it would have gone below 140 points now the reason I'm going back to this uh, or going to this game in the rematch and taking the under and expecting it to cash this time is Kansas State on the road offensively has been putrid. They're scoring just 68.6 points per game on the road this season. That's been like a bottom 50 uh, points per game in the country when playing on the road. And you're going to see this team take a lot of threes. They do that already, uh, uh, like as it is, regardless of opponent. But Kansas is a team that defends so well in the interior, top 15 interior defense, that they're going to force you to take threes and play from the perimeter. And their three-point defense, while it isn't elite, Kansas State just is a terribly inefficient uh, three-point shooting team. With Tyler Perry, you know, they just have not been consistent. I wouldn't mind the first half under in this game either, but it's not quite out yet, or else I might have put that on the card, so you could potentially play that as well. But Kansas State's shooting less than 32% from three. Like, they rank 278th in three-point percentage. This team, when taking threes, has not been efficient enough. Their two-point offense has actually kind of saved their efficiency overall from the field, so... I like Kansas's defensive matchup in this game, in the rematch. If you do remember, Kansas State won this game on the road. I think Kansas will get the better of them here, and it starts with their defense. Now, with that defense, should force some turnovers. Like, Kansas State's a bottom 10 team in the country in turnover rate, just inexplicable decision-making from this team that just has not meshed all season long. So they are definitely going to lose some possessions there as well. Trans, uh, transitioning over to Kansas in their offense lives through Hunter Dickinson, lives through Kevin McCuller. They're going to attack the inside, get to the rim to get their points. And Kansas State is a very good interior defense. Like their defense has been fantastic where their offense has really struggled. So Kansas State's opponents are shooting just 46% from two, 27th in the country. And Kansas just isn't a big offensive threat on the glass. They're not going to get those second chance points. As good as Dickinson's been, he can kind of find himself 
uh, floating at, at points in this in, in the game when the ball's not in his hands. He's not very aggressive at the rim when he's not the one look, uh, with the ball in his hands. So I'm not going to see, you know, on these misses, a lot of second chance points for Kansas. That is a good sign here because, again, Kansas State is very good defending the field. Uh, and you look at Kansas, you know, their bench, they don't have a... a uh, they don't have a deep rotation here. They can definitely run into some lulls from offensive scoring when they do go to that bench because they're not. They don't have a lot of talent there to go to. So I think at 142 and a half, there's still a little bit of value here. I think this game is going to be played closer to that the 130s than we're going to see in the 140s. So give me the under in this game. And lastly, we head to a team that burned us on Saturday. I'm going to go back here. I like Nevada plus five and a half at Boise State. We played this with New Mexico, and New Mexico ran into foul trouble with Donovan Dent and JT Toppin and just could not stay in this game. I think, I think we've got a similar spot here, and you know, we, I think we get more efficiency from Nevada. You know, Jalen House was terrible for the Lobos in that game. He was like O of eight, I believe, from three O of nine, maybe. Uh, if we get better spot up shooting, we get better execution offensively from Nevada. I think we can do enough here to get a cover and potentially a win on the road here. These are two teams that have won five straight games apiece. You know, nobody's kind of hotter. There's, you're not, you're not calling for one team to be hotter than the other. Both have some big wins in their last couple with New Mexico for Boise State and Colorado State for Nevada. What I like here, much like New Mexico, Nevada is going to attack the interior and get their points inside. If they get Ken and Blackshear back, which I would expect, who's missed the last two games, missed the game against Fresno State, but I would ultimately expect he missed that game as a, a team that wasn't much of a threat for them. They didn't need him back. This is a Mountain West Conference that's still vying for a lot when it comes to um, the conference tournament and their position overall for seeding because... This is a jam-packed group of like six, seven teams that a loss here could put some some hurt on these teams when it comes to winning the, the Mountain West Tournament. What I like for Nevada, they're going to get those points inside, and that's where Boise State has struggled. It wasn't as much of a factor against New Mexico, but on the season have struggled. Boise State's opponents are shooting 52.1% from two. That's 253rd in the nation. So Nevada's going to attack there. They're going to get to the free throw line. They're the sixth highest. They get to the free throw line at the sixth highest rate in the country. Boise State ranks 182nd when it comes to keeping teams off of it. So not a suit, pretty much right at the country's average. And you got a guy like Jared Lucas who can spot up and shoot at a much better level than a guy like Jalen House for New Mexico. Get Ken and Blackshear back. This offense can definitely do enough. And the reason that I like New Mexico. Uh, in this, in the, the game on the weekend, was their three point defense, and there's still a great three point shooting shooting defense from Nevada as well to be able to hold the guy like Max Rice in check. They've got uh, their opponent shooting 31.4 percent from three, and New Mexico really struggled on the defensive glass. I don't think you're going to get that from Nevada. They'll match up better. They're 90th in defensive rebounding this season. They can do a better job taking care of the defensive glass, defending the three, and doing a better job being able to play in transition and get those points in the interior like we talked about. So getting five and a half points, I know it's on the road in the Mountain West. I think we get Nevada here in a spot where they could potentially knock off the Broncos and pick up a win, but I'll happily take the five and a half points. All right, those are my three favorite college basketball plays for Tuesday. Guys, if you're looking for more, again, drop me a follow. That uh, link to my Twitter will be down below in the description. If you enjoyed today's video, greatly appreciate it if you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and looking for college basketball content because we'll have plenty coming for you over the next couple of weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.